Hey friends, today I'm doing something a little bit different. I am gonna be vlogging my experience with Once Upon a Time book boxes. <laughs> I am gonna be reading this book today. I've got a snow day, and so I'm gonna be reading This Rebel Heart and working my way through it. This is by Catherine Locke. It is YA and historical fiction and magical realism, so definitely outside of my usual genre. I chose the YA Once Upon a Book Club box because I wanted to add some YA back into my reading. So basically what this box is, there are gifts that go along with page numbers in the story. So I'm gonna be opening the box and kind of showing you, I think everything is wrapped. So I'm gonna show you kind of what the box looks like, giving you a synopsis of the story, and then we'll go from there, okay? So here's the box. It says, like the river, they were magical and wild and architects of their own story. Really love that flower print there. It does have a dear reader from the author in the back. You get a little signing. Um, ooh, a bookmark that matches. It does look like it has some like YA newsletter, like book prompts. I'm gonna look into this a little bit more. Book club kit, it says, that's really cool. It has an interview with the author, some book club prompts, and then an, an activity on the back. Okay, this is what I've been waiting for. Look at those gifts. I think there are three in each box. It tells me what page to open them up on. They're wrapped in that really pretty paper. Oh my gosh, it kind of matches. So I'm gonna check out the book now. So this book um, has to do with right after World War II. Celia is a girl in Hungary who has survived the war. Unfortunately, her parents did not. They were killed by the secret police and it was a very public thing. And they were recently exonerated of their crimes, but she still has a lot of questions about who her parents were, what they were doing. She also still does not feel safe in her country. There's a lot of unrest. She's being followed. And so I'm interested to see how magical realism fits in with this story. So I am going to read to page 38. That's where I stop. And I will read to that page, talk a little bit, and open the first gift. Okay, so I read to page 38. A lot is happening already. Celia is being followed. She works in a newspaper. She's being followed, and all of a sudden she gets saved by this mysterious man who just kind of walks up, takes her arm, and offers to walk her to work. She is Jewish, and she is planning to run away with her aunt. Her aunt is the only other person in their family that survived. And so they're planning to run away because they still don't feel safe in Hungary. I think it's in Bud Budapest. And there also is a river that seems to be very significant to the story. Apparently the river runs right through the middle of Budapest and she feels very connected to this river. She just got home to her aunt who is kind of cooking to cope with the stress of her being followed and she doesn't want her niece to get disappeared. So on this page, it has a little tab that says, open your gift now. So I'm gonna pull that tab out and open Open it up. I really love this box. I'm wondering if it's gonna have something to do, her aunt was making um, bread in the story. I was right. Okay, so Lona's bread pan tea towel. Ah, oh, that's adorable. Oh my gosh. Oh, it has, the little marker has a quote from the book. Okay, so here's the tea towel. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Writing, newspaper prints. Um, oh, the recipes. Duh, that makes sense. And it also has a little bread pan. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Our next gift to open is on page 68, so I'm gonna wrap this back up and keep reading. Okay, things, things are getting kind of crazy. She was supposed to meet this guy after work who saved her, but he stood her up, did not show up, and then you find out he was actually captured by the secret police, and I think he might be magical because they were trying to torture him and it wasn't working, which was a little bit confusing. She also went to the bar and this guy offered to dance with her and she was like, oh yeah, let's have fun. His name was Tomas. And then 
Tomas kind of pulled her in and was like, hey, my friend disappeared. Can you help me find him? I know your parents were very big members of the party. And so maybe you have some sway. And she immediately felt like in danger because she's already being followed. And so she tried to pull away and it just kind of created um, quite a lot of chaos. So I think my three main characters are gonna be this mystery guy, Tomas and um, Celia. So Celia gets back home and there's like a mystery package that has been delivered, which is also kind of scary because she, again, is already being followed. If somebody is dropping something off for her, that's probably not good. Um, they didn't leave a name and it turns out it's her dad's diaries. And she doesn't even know like how, how they got to her door. Here we go. I'm gonna open it up. Ooh. So we have some journals. Wait, I think they might be different. Yes, so we have present, record your days, future for hopes and dreams, gratitude, count your blessings, and then past, write your history. So past, present, future, and gratitude. <laughs> they're really nice. Um, they're kind of a little bit flimsy, but Oh, and not lined. I'm not big on not lined, but really cute. Our next and last gift is not until page 230, so I have a bit of reading to do. Okay, I am at this point two thirds of the way through the book. Got to my last stopping point. So this is definitely gonna be spoilers. The first two were pretty early in the book. This one is most of the way through. So let's talk about the plot so far. There is gonna be an uprising and Tomas and Celia are involved. The mystery guy turned out to be the angel of death. He's just an angel and they both kind of accepted it pretty well. I think that's one of, one of my few qualms with this book. I really enjoy the book, but it's lacking some detail. There are some times where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a huge thing and everybody's pretty cool with it pretty quick. For example, some of the magical realism elements, the river turned to stone, just turned to stone. And I mean, people were kind of shocked, but then just went on with their day. So it also is like the characters become friends very fast. And I think that may just be pieces of the genre. It feels a little bit lacking in detail here and lacking in like connection. That being said, I'm really invested in how this uprising is gonna go. Where I'm stopping right now, they are marching on parliament and um, everybody is like coming out into the streets and all of a sudden there is gunfire. Everybody's kind of ducking. They turn all the lights out in the city. They cut power so it's pitch black and Celia is trusting in the magic of the river that has now turned back to water, by the way. And so she takes her newspaper and rolls it up and dips it in the water and it um, becomes a torch. The water lights her torch for her. It doesn't burn out and she passes that torch you know, the flame along, which was really cool. She was talking at the beginning of the book of leaving the city with her aunts. I don't know if she's still gonna do that. She's still talking like she's gonna do that, but I don't know if she's still gonna do that. And I don't know if her aunt's gonna leave without her or stay. I feel like somebody is definitely not gonna make it. One of the things about the angel of death is he doesn't know who's gonna die or how things are gonna turn out, but he usually shows up when there is gonna be tragedy. You get to see him really connecting with humans. He tries not to connect. He talks about, you know, his job as an angel is not to get involved, not to have feelings. And yet him and Tomas and Celia are very quickly forming a friendship. But there are times where he, you know, kind of gives them a knowing look and then walks away because he has to go do his job as the angel of death, which is kind of crazy. So I'm going to open my last gift. I have a guess. We just were talking about the newspaper flame. So I'm guessing a candle. This feels like a candle box. Oh, okay. I was half right. There is a candle. It has like um, print around it. So it's peppermint, cedar, clove, and eucalyptus. It's really pretty. But it also came with wish paper. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this book. I think at the end of the day, I would give it a high three star rating, um, 3.5, 3.75. Part of that is just me. I'm not big on magical realism. 
and I feel like those aspects, the magical river was cool, but I didn't, I found myself not buying into it. The ending was a little bit ambiguous, but also hopeful. And that was fun. I think the character work in this really grew on me. At first, I wasn't buying into the relationships because they seemed to be happening very fast, but you really get to see them grow throughout the story. And if you're looking for a book box, this was really fun. I have five more of these book boxes. I haven't looked at most of the books in them, so I'm very interested to see what they are. They are all gonna be YA. I don't know if they're all gonna be magical realism though. So hopefully you will be seeing at least five more of these. <laughs> Let me know if you've ever done this book box, because I think I would love to hear what the adult boxes are like, if the gifts are different. So I'm gonna put this book away and I will see you all later. Bye friends.